Okay, so picking up where we left off in the Lab 5 guided tutorial, we had just built the model 4.1 from Chapter 4 of Kelton et al. We had run the model, and we were confronted with a dialog box like this one. The simulation is run to completion. Would you like to see results? If we click yes there, it will take us directly to the reports section of ARENA, which has a number of different reports which can tell us interesting metrics for us about to evaluate our simulation. So before we drill down into reports, I just want to better emphasize where these reports come from and how they're configured. So if we go back into our ARENA model, this is model 4.1 that we've built through the guided tutorial. If we go into the run setup, then if I go to project parameters, which we set up during the building of this model, down here under statistics collection, notice that entities, resources, queues, and processes are checked. That tells ARENA that we want it to collect statistics to put into the report on these things. We could turn off some of these if we didn't care about it and didn't want to complicate the report with it, or we could add more. For example, costing, this here, if that's turned on, then inside ARENA, you can actually give different units of time different costs, and it can do bookkeeping, so it can actually sort of keep track of not only how much time do you spend in a particular activity, but how much is it costing you. So you can put sort of the hourly wages of a worker, or you can put uh, maybe sales lost due to waiting time. You can actually put monetary values on things, and it will then collect all those values for you, and then it can put that in the report for you. So that's a little more advanced, but it's not that advanced, and so that's something that might be a great idea to put into your final projects. These other ones are a little more advanced, although we will see these more as we get into more of the, the additional labs that will come later in the semester. For now, I'm just sticking to entities, resources, queues, and processes, the things we kind of talked about in lecture. The other thing that I want to point out is if I go to replication parameters, there's a number of replications which we've set to 1 in this model. I am going to temporarily set that higher than 1 to show you how it changes the reports slightly. Now what this replication parameters means is that Every replication, ARENA will run your simulation from a different random number seed. So if I only run one replication, it starts with some random number seed, it runs the experiment until the end, and then it shows you the report just based on that one replication. If I set this to two, then after it one runs that full replication and finishes the simulation after the 32-hour simulation time, it will then restart the simulation, but it will use a different random number seed. And that different random number seed will mean that there'll be different random events that'll occur, so different random timings that'll occur. Part A will, uh, will part A inter arrival times will be different. Part B inter arrival times will be different. The service times will be different. So it's like running a whole nother experiment for another 32 hours with a different you know, set of parts coming in that have the same statistical properties as the other parts, but they just have a slightly different, uh, they just, it's like the, we rolled the die, uh, you know, a slightly different way, and so we end up getting slightly different outcomes, even though the statistics are the same. So that's the reason why you might want to run multiple replications, is because every replication is going to have a different output, and that adds strength to your results. All right, so let's say we did two replications like that. Now, if I hit play, I get to see the animation of this first replication. And down here, where it's got the timing going on, I can see one, that's replication one, and this is how far it is in replication one. I will not have to wait for all of replication one to end and then replication two to start. Now there is a slider up here that I can slide around to make the replication faster or slower. And that helps. I can also hit this fast forward button, in which case it really uh, you know, increases the, re the replication or the animation speed so that I really don't see anything in here, but it very quickly gets through both replications. Now I wanted to show you one more way to make things run even faster. So I'm gonna stop this simulation and restart it. And if I go to the run menu and then go to run control, 
there's this batch run, and it's just a toggle. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't apparently do anything when you click on it, but this icon next to it will change slightly. So if I go back to run, run control, I can see the batch run is now turned on. Now if I hit play, I don't even have to fast forward, then it immediately, almost immediately, finishes the simulation. So it is a way, if you really don't care about animation, you just want all of your replications to finish, you can just hit that batch run and it'll finish like that. So let's see the results of this. Note, remember, I did two replications. So that's why it says replications two up here. It brought up the reports. Now this uh, ca category overview is what comes up by default. And so by default, in the key performance indicators, the default KPI here is just number out. And this is just the number of entities that passed through. This number is an average across both replications. So if I go to category by replication here, in here, if I expand this report, I can see a replication one and a replication two. And if I look under replication one, under the number, the entity tab under replication one, I can scroll down here and I can see that in replication one, there were this many part A's that exit and this many part B's that exited. Under replication two, I actually see that under its entity tab in sort of a, an analogous place, I might have to go to an, the next page here, then I see that its part A out and part B are similar, but slightly different than what I saw in replication one. And so that goes to show that by drawing a different random number seed, I get slightly different outcomes, maybe statistically similar, but still a different outcome. And the category overview is averaging across both of those. Similarly, if I go down to not just, um, you know, this key performance indicators, but if I go down to entity here, then if I look at these columns across here, like VA time, that's value added time, that is time an entity spent doing something useful, not just standing in a line. And for part A's, it has an average and a half width, but this average and half width is actually being taken over, and this half width is a 95% confidence interval half width. And so this, this is like 9.866 plus or minus 3.24. That's how you're supposed to read that. And th but this isn't taken over all of the entities over all of the replications. This is taken over an average from replication one and an average from replication two. So it's really just you know, two numbers that are then put into a confidence interval. Likewise, that's why up here it says minimum average and maximum average. That sounds a little funny. What does it mean to be a minimum average and a maximum average? Well, it turns out that if we were to go into the category by replication here and look under replication one, and then look under entity for replication one. Then we see under value added time, part A has got an average and a half width and a true minimum and maximum, no minimum average or maximum average. So per entity or per replication, these are the average over all of the entities in that replication. And in the other replication, similarly, for this replication, this is the average over all of the entities just within that replication. And in the category overview, these numbers that we see are actually being taken over those two averages. So in our case, if I go back to the run mode, and if I stop this and restart it, and then go back to my run setup and say I only want one replication, which goes back to the books example, now, if I hit play, and remember, uh, it still has the batch mode on, so I'm not going to see any animation. When I, brought being, when I brought back to the results here, in the special case where you only have one replication, then if I look at this category overview, now it basically is just a copy of what was in the category by replication. So for two or more replications, the category overview averages over all replications. But for just one replication, the category overview is basically just a copy of what's in this category by replication. All right, so if I look down through here, um, so under this category overview, 
Notice this, rep this report has eight pages. So if I were to go and say view um, whole page in here, it shows me this whole thing and I can page through here or I can click down through the bookmarks here and I can click in to particular uh, bookmarks that will take me to those pages. And notice that under the category overview, it has things that show up over here as well. So there's an entity under the category overview, a process, a queue, a resource, and a user specified. Similarly, over here, there's ent entity, process, queue, resource, and user specified. And there are those other things along this side which showed up in those, in those parameters under the run setup that we didn't turn on for this simulation, but they're still here but they're not here in the actual report because it didn't generate those because we didn't ask it to generate them. So the difference here is how the averages are grouped. So if you've taken a relational database course, an information systems course, you've, you know, you've learned about when you have these giant databases, when you're taking these aggregate statistics like average, uh, then you can group by different things. And that's what it's doing here. So I have a bunch of entities and each of those entities has a different type. So uh, in this, if I, in this entity tab here, so if maybe I zoom back in, instead of looking at the whole page, I'll do page width. So under entity, under the category overview, I see part A and part B. So what this did is it took all of the entities that were generated for part A that entered and left the system and it took their average value added time, and that's what it's reporting, only the part A entities. Likewise, these are only the part B entities that were tagged with value added time. Now, if I instead go to, let's say the Q section, then what the Q section shows me is that it is going to take all of those entities and it's going to run stats on those entities, but it's not going to group them by their entity type. It's going to group them by the queues that they went through. So in this prep A process queue, so that's the prep A block, the prep A process block, and it has a queue above it because it has a, a limited resource that causes these entities to wait. And it says their waiting time on average is this. Well, what that means is it doesn't care whether those were, now of course we know that only part A's go through there, but, um, and so maybe it's easier for me to focus on say the sealer process. So in the sealer process, we know that part A's go through there as well as part B's. And so in that sealer process, this is saying it doesn't care if what type of part goes through there, it's going to average over whatever went through the sealer process, ignoring their part type. And this average here, this is how long those waited. So regardless of your part type, this is how long you wait before you get into the sealer. Similar with the rework, part A or part B could go through the rework. And this is the average time any part, regardless of their type, goes through the rework. Down here for number waiting. So this is like, you know, so this here is saying for the if we look, so number waiting is one of these things that's averaged over time. So at any instant of time, how many are waiting for the prep A process? And if it averages that over time, one of these doing one of these time averages, then that's what it gets here. All right, so, and then you've got minimum values and maximum values. And so the number waiting was uh, the minimum value zero, which means some got instantly in but it got, uh, there were as high as 11 at some points in time waiting for a prep A. All right, now if I click on say resource, then I get a totally different aggregation. So in the case of resources, I can look and I've got these different resources that I defined. I had a prep A resource, which the prep A process used, a prep B resource, a rework resource, and a sealer resource. And all of these stats are about basically about resource utilization. So I can look here and I can say the instantaneous utilization, well, it looks like prep A was busy 90% of the time, where prep B had more idle time, it was only busy 75% of the time. And so I'm, again, ignoring the types of entities and just focusing on what type, I'm focusing on the resource, how busy was the resource. The sealer resource processed both types of entities, A's and B's, but I don't care what type it was working on. I'm just interested in when it was working. Process is similar to resource, 
but it allows us to sort of focus on bottlenecks and choke points. And so the idea here is that we had these blocks inside the model. So if I were to go back into the model, there are these blocks, prep a process. Now prep a process uses the prep a resource. The sealer process uses the sealer resource. But in principle, we could have processes, multiple processes, multiple points in this flow, all using the same resource. And so if that were the case, let's say the sealer process and the rework process both use the same resource, we might still be interested in knowing is, the, is there a bottleneck here but not one here. And so this, by going into this category overview and looking at process, this allows us to see how much uh, time has been spent in each one of these processes, how, how much wait time is going on at each one of these processes, how much time is the process actually being used, and so on. And so there's a bunch of other stats that are process specific. And then the last one I wanted to focus on here is this user specified. So that is going to show up at the bottom here. And these are these ones that we created in those record modules. So remember that those record modules, in our case, created a list of time that the entities spent before they either ultimately were salvaged, scrapped, or shipped. And so this here is actually aggregating over the exit paths, not over the type of uh, part, because that's how we designed our model. So back in our model, we had these record blocks that we manually put into there. So we have no idea what type of part will go through here, but any part that goes through this record block gets added to that record scrapped parts tally. And that record scrapped parts tally stores a time interval, which basically this is the response time for the part as it goes through there. So a part come either an A or a B, it goes through this whole process, if it gets to here, this just subtracts the current time, which will be the time it exits, uh, and then it uh, subtracts off the arrival time. So we find out how long that part was in there. And then that goes into a tally that then gets aggregated inside this report under those that user-specified heading. So we can see the salvage parts. This is the average amount of time they spent in there, scrapped uh, this amount of time, and shipped this amount of time. It makes sense the shipped spent less time in there, because they didn't have to go through re rework, whereas these ones did have to go through the re rework, where the scrapped ones ultimately were not shipped and the salvaged ones were shipped, but these shipped ones had to go through a whole other process, which is why it took so much longer for them to get out. So those are basically how you're going to find the stats that you'll need for the lab. Now, I mentioned you can also find them over here. In the case of running one replication, all of these things down here, entities, queues, resources, processes, and user specified, are going to have all of the same information that you can find in the category overview. So they're really, but they're in maybe a slightly different format that might actually be easier to read. So notice this is a very different format than the entity uh, summary inside the category overview. When we move into moving using multiple replications, then each one of these will be grouped by replication. So you can see here that underneath here, uh, there's a replication over here, that if you click on these, it will end up showing you the per replication stats. So if you ever wanna look across all the replications, you have to use this category overview or do it manually after you go through each, uh, each replication. So that's sort of the hands-on inside arena here. And if we sl flip through the slides real quickly, um, you can see that I kind of go over the same sorts of things that I just talked about there. So if you need a quick refresher, then go through and take a look at these slides. I'm gonna get rid of me here for a second. And so as you can see here, I've just gone over that the category overview allows us to look across these replications at things like entity stats and that uh, you should be careful about that this is multiple pages and there's this tiny little uh, 
bar up at the top that allows you to toggle through these pages. You can also just use the bookmarks, which are over here. And this is just sort of explaining that, you know, we generate lots of different types of entities. And so we're basically just aggregating or grouping those entities by different things before we take our aggregate statistics. If we click on queues, we're going to aggregate by queues instead of by entity type and then take aggregate statistics on those groupings. And so that's where we get these queue specific data. You can also find queues down here. Uh, those will be broken out by replication. Since we only ran one replication, we're gonna get all the same numbers. Entities similarly is out here by replication. You can find processes, which again are nice to look if you're looking for bottlenecks or choke points. They allow you to analyze what's going on at a particular node in your simulation. But if you are interested in resource utilization, so maybe you're under capacity or over capacity, then you can go through here and see things like utilization. You can see how many uh, resources were actually scheduled and used and so on and so forth. And then under user specified, that's where you've got your, uh, the, the, the things from the record modules. Now, in some other videos I've, uh, that I've posted online, I actually show you how to use more advanced blocks inside Arena to get raw data out in case you just want to do all these stats yourself in another program like MATLAB, Excel, or R. But uh, these stats here under user specified often go pretty far into most things that you need, but you certainly can make use of those raw data as well. As I mentioned, project parameters, that's what sets up how what arena records, but also keep track of these little things here, like on this dispose block, record entity statistics. You wanna make sure that that is checked and it will be checked by default, or else entities that come out of here, their data will be totally thrown out. And so there's a bunch of these uh, little check boxes that show up throughout the arena boxes that you should uh, make at least pay attention to when they pop up. By default, Arena will record those stats, but if you do want to have certain, you know, certain entities you want to be disposed, but you don't actually care about their stats, maybe they're just virtual entities helping you with the logic of the program, then in those cases, maybe you want to uncheck those so Arena doesn't keep track of them. All right, well, that is my brief overview of how to make use of the reports. Uh, so if you're moving through the lab right now, you should go on to the the next video, which is actually goes through how to do the lab exercise. And, um, and then if you have any questions during the lab, then be sure to make use of Canvas or send us a note.